everybody, and welcome to part six. Nope, seven now in the Dream World Doing tutorial series. Now, um, in this video, it's basically a continuation of the last one, except this time we're going to be working in the server and see how we can execute server side scripts and how we can then use the server functions and and you know what's different between running on the client and the server. So. Open up your Gary's mod, as usual, and your Sublime. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this exact script that we wrote in the previous video. We're not going to change anything whatsoever. Now, if you remember before, if I go ahead and I just spawn in a bunch of props like this. There you go. Now, as you can see now, um, when I go ahead and do Lua underscore open script underscore CL, and I do the test.lua script, as you can see, things turn red just like before, right? And when we interact with them, just like before, they go back to the normal color because we only change their color on the client, not on the actual server. So it only changes for us. And if you're not sure why it changes back, just watch the explanation on the previous video. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the exact same script, except this time we're going to get rid of the underscore CL when we do Lua underscore open script. Now, if you don't do underscore CL, then... Gmod is going to execute that script on the server instead of the client. So now when we run our script, as you can see, the same thing happened, except this time they stay red because the client has authority over what color certain things are. So as you can see, now that we set the color on the server, the colors actually stay this because this is the actual props color and it's not just a visual, a visual appearance for us. So now that we can do that, um, just excuse me a second, there we go. Now that we can do that, what else can we do? Well, we can go ahead and open up Sublime. Uh, actually, I'm also going to grab the, the Gmod wiki page as per usual. Um, remember, the wiki is very, very important. I, I recommend anybody use it. But now we're going to go again to classes. We're going to go to the entity. Se oh, that's the file section. We're going to go to the entity section. And in here, we got all of these functions. Now, we can use the blue ones now, but we can't use the orange ones. Because remember, orange is client side, blue is server side. When we run our script on the server, we can't use anything that's allowed to, uh, that can only be used on the client and vice versa. We can't use anything on the client that can only be used on the server. So let's go ahead and we're going to search for a special one called Ignite. And as you can see, there it is, entity Ignite. and this one takes two parameters, and the first parameter is how long we want to set it, uh, set it on fire to. And here you go, here it is, length. How long to keep the entity ignited? Not supplying this argument will not ignite the entity at all. And the radius, the radius of the ignition will ignite everything around the entity uh, that is in this radius. So let's say you had some kind of explosion. When it explodes, you could call this at the explosion entity, and then also light everything within a certain radius on fire. So let's go ahead and we're going to do that. So just like this color script, we can get rid of this color now. And we're going to call Ignite, okay? Now, in case you're wondering how I got autocomplete like that, um, I didn't say it in any of my other videos, and I do apologize, but just go on Google and search Gmod Lu Alexa for Sublime, um, or whatever editor you use. It's also one for Notepad++ and Atom, and all the information should be there for you if you need it. But we're going to continue. So the length is, again, going to be how long it's on fire. So we're going to set it on fire for 10 seconds. And the radius, we're just going to set to 1. And the reason why we do this is because 1 is a very small area. We don't want to set anything else on fire right now. Just, just the entity. So now when we go in, now what you'll notice though when I run this is all of the entities are going to catch fire, not just one. And the reason why is because if you remember, we're in a loop. We loop over all of the entities and we call Ignite on every single one of them. So now if I go ahead and I run this... As you can see, everything burns up and dies. Now, if you just excuse me just for one second while I turn my audio off. There we go. Now, you may be wondering why we caught fire as well. Now, the reason why we caught fire is because the player is actually an entity as well. Now, that may be a bit confusing to some of you, but... An entity is basically everything in the game is an entity, okay? Um, the map is an entity, this light is an entity, the water is an entity, this prop is an entity, I'm an entity. Every object in the game is an entity. Now, the player is basically an extension of the entity for the player. Um, so it still is an entity while also being a player at the same time. That may be a bit confusing to some of you. Uh, but I just want you to understand, that's why we caught fire as well. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can do a little challenge here and make it so that only everybody except players catch uh, everything except the player catches fire so let's go ahead and search the wiki for is player and as you can see on an entity you can call a function is player 
Now, this can be run server and client side, and it will check if the entity is a player or not. And if it is a player, it will return true. If it's not a player, it will return false. So what we can do is we can just simply do an if statement here, saying if v dot is player is equal to false, then. So we're only going to be doing this. We're only going to whoops. We're only going to call that ignite function if the entity is player returns false, which means it's not a player. So now when we take that exact same script, modify it a little bit, and run it we still catch fire. Um, <laughs> I was a bit silly there. That was my bad. Um, I'm kind of glad that happened though, because now I can explain to you that the player itself is an entity, yes. Um, and we remove that. But for example, the player's Fizzgun is not an entity, uh, is an entity as well, sorry, but it's not classed as a player. So there's other parts of us that is catching fire. Um, so <laughs> if that doesn't make much sense, I really, really do apologize. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at just a few more here. Uh, actually, we're going to move over to the player. Now, this is where it might get a little bit confusing, but I'm going to make something called players, and I'm going to set it equal to player.getAll. Now, note that it's just player.getAll, not players. A lot of people do players, and it doesn't work, and they get confused. So now instead of getting a list of all the entities we get a list of all the players on the server now notice how we can't just do local player anymore because local player doesn't exist because we are on the uh, on the server not on the client but what we can do is we can go ahead and do v.kill now just to show you what this is going to do it's going to loop through all of the players and it's going to kill every single player that it finds now if we go back to the wiki real quick um there we go i'm going to search kill and as you can see, player kill is something that can get called and it just kills the player. It's as simple as that, but as you can see, it can only be run on server side. So now let's go ahead and save our script. We'll go back in game, we'll run our script. And as soon as we tap back into the game, I die with no reason. It just says I committed suicide. So I hope that makes sense to you. Now you can run as many scripts as you want, client or server side. It will also work, but Note that you can't mix them both. Unless it's a shared function, you can't mix them both. So let's go ahead and look at one more, which is ban. So you can get a player, you can call ban the minutes and whether to kick them or not. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call ban on me, uh, on all of the players. We're gonna ban me for two minutes and we are gonna kick me from the game. Now, if we say false here, it will ban me, but won't kick me from the game. So I'll still be in the game until I disconnect. Then when I reconnect, then we'll be able to join. And if we go ahead and execute the script now, as you can see, I was disconnected for reason kick and banned. So I hope that makes sense to you on how we can use server side scripts. I do apologize that again, we did do too much. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at hooks though. Now hooks are gonna open up a whole world of possibilities for you. They are very fun to play around with and insanely useful when writing scripts for Gary's Mod. So I hope you learned something and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.